Hello, everyone. I am standing here with Woody King Jr., who is the uh, the recipient of this evening's Ellen Stewart Award. Now, as you know, Ellen Stewart Award is presented to an individual in this case who demonstrates a significant contribution to the off-off Broadway community through service, support, and leadership. So, congratulations, Mr. King. Thank you. Thank you. How do you feel about this? I feel good. You know, I feel uh, any kind of recognition uh -huh. of the work you do is uh, a reward in itself, just mm -hmm. to, you know, the recognition of it. And, and you were here 10 years ago. You were just saying that, right? Yeah, you yeah, were here yeah. for the very first? I was, at the, I was at the very first one. And uh, when Ellen Stewart came on stage and actually got it. This you is, did? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So, but what happens and what I'm amazed by is the young people who come into the American theater and sort of like mark off territory. And the innovative theater uh, sort of like marked off its territory and said, if you work within this area, we will reward you mm -hmm. with uh, best this, best that, outstanding this, outstanding that, uh, recognition of what you do. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it's sort of like it's so different uh, when the innovative theater uh, does that so different than, say, Off-Broadway mm -hmm. or Broadway, which is Tony's and Drama Desk. Right. It's so different, you know, right. because it's those people who are changing the cultural life of New York City. Mm -hmm. And it's and all I, very peer-led, too, our, yeah, ours yeah, is. You know, yeah. there's no committee, necessarily. No committee, yeah. It's all just done on judges. And right. So did you ever, did you know Ellen Stewart? Yeah, yeah, yes, indeed. So what does it feel like to win an award in her That's name? I, oh, man, it feels, it's gratifying. Yes. It feels very good, and I said that up on stage. Good. Because yeah. now if there's one person who contributed to Off Off Broadway, that was certainly Ellen. Ellen. And Ellen now you're following was, in her yeah. steps. Ellen was there for, uh, with La Mama some uh, 50 years and it's still going on mm -hmm. uh, when it was on uh, 9th Street and she moved from 9th Street to West 4th Street and you know it tried to put her out of business many times and she persevered mm -hmm. and in person lived right above that theater too right right there <laughs> in it and even in her last days she would come down ring the bell and say this is la mama and it was just it was amazing yeah yeah. Now, have you seen, you've seen work, uh, you've worked, I'm sure, in more established, some of the Broadway, some of the off-Broadway, maybe, oh, no, said? I've, I've directed on Broadway. Mm -hmm. I've produced maybe eight plays on Broadway, but they went from the nonprofit into Broadway. So that's what I was going to ask. So yeah. you've seen both sides. How, how, does, how, does, how does it feel here in the, in the off-off-Broadway world, where sometimes we're not doing it for the money? Do you, do you notice no, a no, difference no, no. in the... No, well, doesn't do it for the money. Mm -hmm. There's no way we could produce for 44 years or 45 years if it was about the money. Mm -hmm. So when I go out to colleges, universities to direct or teach, um, it's so different because you see the young people who you are teaching and you know ultimately they're going to come into this city to enhance the cultural life of the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the off-Broadway theater eh, and the Broadway theater, there's really no differentiation. Yeah. Uh, you know, the innovative and off-off-Broadway is where uh, the marcation, demarcations are. Mm -hmm. Now, you've also set up theater companies, too. New, New Federal Theater New is Federal yours, right? Theater, that's what I started in 1970. Okay. And, what and did, tell us about New Federal real quick. Uh, New Federal Theater is about integrating minorities and women into the American theater. And all, over the 45 years, we produced maybe five, three or 400 plays uh, by women and minorities. We have produced more plays by uh, women than any other theater company in New York. Be a women's project or whatever. Uh, we produced uh, more black plays by uh, African Americans uh, and non African Americans than any other theater in the country. And is it still a challenge to bring to bring that population to the theater, or, or is it out there and we just need to shed more light on them? It's out there. You had need to shed more light on it. Um, I, it just irks me when someone says, I can't find any new plays. I can't find any new mm. plays. And I may have 30 or 40 plays that if I had the money, I could produce. Right. It just goes to prove you that art and, and the artists, they're out there right they're, now. They're out there. They're, out there. they're we coming need... into the city every day. Right. They're graduating these major universities, small uh, uh, black universities, a historic black colleges, Howard, Tuskegee. They're just coming in, you know. Carnegie Mellon, Yale, they, they're coming in. They're coming in, and they need a place to work, and Broadway doesn't provide that. So a lot of them just leave and go uh, into television and film and try and fill that void. Which is nice, but yeah. still, if it weren't for you and if it weren't for the New Federal Theater and if it weren't for people like you, I think we would be a, we'd be a lot less fortunate. So thank we would, you. We would be. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It means me a lot to us. So Woody King, Jr., recipient of this year's uh, Ellen Stewart Award. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, well, it is my pleasure to be speaking to the inimitable Mr. Andre DeShields, who
just awarded to Woody King Jr. this year's Ellen Stewart Award, which of course is for the individual organization demonstrating a significant contribution to the off-off-Broadway community through service support and leadership. Now you yourself, sir, have a long, illustrious list of credits. Um, and I'm just looking at this, the full Monty, for which you received a, a, the Tony Drama Desk and the uh, Astaire Award nominations and the Outer Critics Circle. I mean, I could go on. The Drama League <laughs> Awards, Ain't Misbehave in the Drama Desk nomination, The Wiz, the title role. Not to mention all the work that you create of your own accord to tell your, your solo performances yeah. and all of that. And yet here you are, a little old off off Broadway. How does it feel to be among the off off Broadway community tonight? I feel absolutely at home. Yeah. I mentioned as I was presenting the Ellen Stewart Award to Woody, that when I came to New York in 1973, it was Ellen Stewart who invited me to come to La Mama and make that my first artistic home in New York. So from 1973 to 2002, I performed in some way or another at La Mama. You did? Yes, for all those many years. Wow. Yeah. So I'm not a stranger to the off-Broadway community or the independent theater mm -hmm. community. As a matter of fact, I'm here today on my day off from teching a new show that's going to be presented at the public theater. Tell us about that. This piece is called The Fortress of Solitude. It's adapted from a novel of the same name by Jonathan Lethem. It is a music. He's a Brooklyn writer. Do I yes, know? Yes, yes, I've read some yes. of his of some of his work. He's wonderful. Jonathan Lethem loves Brooklyn. Yeah. And he writes about Brooklyn. And this story, The Fortress of Solitude, takes place on Dean Street in mm -hmm. Brooklyn, and it's the story of the human. I don't want to say loss per se, but the human. Condition. Condition. Okay. Thank you. The, the human condition as it relates to gentrification. Mm. Because what is now Barham Hill mm. used to be Gowanus. Mm. And the story that we are telling in The Fortress of Solitude starts in Gowanus as it goes through the gentrification process and how three generations respond to it. The grandparents the parents, and the children. That sounds like such a New York story. Are you a New York native, or have you? is this your adopted home? Tell me, tell me a little about your relationship to New York. New York is my adopted home, although when I leave the city now, people say, you're from New York, aren't you? Uh, yeah. I say, yeah, I got the game face now. <laughs> but I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. I arrived in New York in 1973, and uh, haven't looked back, actually. Well, we are honored to have you here. Thank you so much for, for gracing us here tonight. And, and um, look, for the, look for the show in, uh, in, is it going to be performed in Brooklyn? You said it's the public. No, no, it's going to be performed at the public. We do our first preview on September 30th, and we'll play through November 2nd. And because this is live, we can do these kinds of things. The word I was looking for was human toll. Wow, a, a lot better. Right. I'm glad you waited for that because I think that tells the story better. Well, thank you, right. and best of luck with that and, and all your future productions. Thank you for, for your contributions to the theater and for joining us tonight. There's more to come. <laughs>